crazy pills started popping off. There it is. Yeah, all those crazy, uh, what you call it? <laughs> but we persevered, Doc. We persevered, man. We, we kept going, man. Kept going and got it done one way or another. Man, it is. Like, I realized, like, man, there's, like, there's so many things that are always trying to stop you from doing certain things. Like, God, Ooh. what's going on? Yeah, like, what's going on? What you trying to say? You trying now. to tell me? Are you trying to tell me something? Like, hey, like God, is the D and D podcast finna blast off for exactly. real? Is it? Exactly. Is it this much of a problem for the devil right now? Exactly, it must be. It must he, be. He must be hating on what we're trying to do because you hating on. Or you trying to build us, God? What you you really want to build us? Because you letting this happen early. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> you ain't trying to end us. You trying to build us because you letting it happen early, right here on the D and D Level Up Podcast, baby. Let's we go. We in here, your boy Daryl, aka King D Money, oh, with your boy Dirk Warren Taylor, DWT in the house. You know it. You know it. we're back again with another D and D Level Up Podcast. Man, we got some conversation, got some words Woo! for y'all today. Whoa. When I tell you the devil been busy, <laughs> he's, man, we, we were trying to get this podcast going. Oh, no, we getting it going. I'm not going to say try. We getting, we speak. Going. We getting we, it we going. Speaking we, we speaking what we believe. And we getting this thing going, man, and, and you just won't believe. We trying to put some things together. Technology don't want to work. Yeah. Technology don't want to be technology. <laughs> and... It just sometimes it works and sometimes it's just there. Yeah. And it, it didn't want to work. One, we we tried that thing how many times? Like it was like four or five. It was it probably was more than that because we tried to get uh, one thing. It just kept, it just kept on stopping or kept on like you know um, blinking out or something or kept buffering and it just kept cutting off. You're like something is wrong. Something is wrong. I say man, I say man, look. We got we got something going on here. Exactly. This must go. This must gonna be good. This, this got to blow up because anytime you have this opposition to purpose, they always call that in the Christian world opposition to purpose. Ooh. Like anytime you have a situation where you know that you're getting resistance, you know, what I'm saying anytime you have that type of resistance, mm-hmm. you know, it's, it's powerful. It's yeah. Gonna, it's gonna touch somebody in some type of way that's gonna be even powerful. We're gonna have some really great. Um, uh, guests on our podcast coming up, guys. I want Ooh, you guys to, to get ready. Y'all ain't it's, ready, man. I don't think y'all ready for this. We got, this ready. got DJ Bay coming in. He's going to come on a podcast basically talking about financial literacy, how to leverage your money. How that to money your, together. Exactly. How to put your money together, how to start leveraging business credit. So we're going to level you guys up. We're going to help you level up. Yes, sir. We 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 going to leave y'all out, man. First thing we want to take care of... I know that the, the first thing I try and take care of is always, always making sure somebody has something in their pocket. That's how you know that. Yeah. That's how you know somebody really, yeah. really. That's how I feel. You know somebody really cares for you. Correct. All right. If they can show you how to move the very thing that gets everything done in your life. Yeah. That that you don't think money runs everything in your life. Exactly. Try try and go outside. <laughs> try and go outside and have the street lights out. Yeah. You know why they would be out? Yeah. Because somebody didn't pay for a service to get done. Exactly. That, exactly. That's the only reason they would be out. Other than that, it, somebody would be out there fixing it. Exactly. And that person fixing it got to get paid. Exactly. And you got to get paid and we all got to get and paid. And we all got to get paid. Somewhere. Somewhere, somehow, you got to get paid. And this is this podcast to help you try to figure out where you need to get paid. Because to be honest with you, a lot of it has to do with your ideas. Because mm. really, when, you, when you're trying to get paid, really is... You really just need strategy, you know, because to be honest with you, how you really make money is, is that you selling somebody an idea. Yeah, and that service, you, you're telling, you're convincing somebody, okay, I've been doing this for a certain period of time. Now, for, because I'm doing this for a certain period of time, you've got to trust that, that I put this idea in your head that you, I deserve or I, I'm valued at the amount of money that you want to give to me based on that value. And a lot of times we don't understand is, is just how you value yourself is not how people value you. So you've got to determine your own value. Cause it's almost like this. If you when I used to manage other artists, I used to tell them, I said, listen, it's all you're only getting as much as you think you're valued. Mm. If you're if you see a person who's a superstar or somebody who you think is has a lot of money, they have come to a realization at some point where I'm I'm more valued than most people. I'm I'm in the one percent. You can't be in the one percent unless you think like the one percent. Mm. And if you're not in the mindset of the 1%, you'll never get out of that, that space because 
If you say, well, I want to make this umpteen amount of money per year, you're not going to make that and go for that type of job that will create that or create that business for that amount if you don't have a mindset, a goal to get there. Because nothing is is is, fan, is like proof that, you know, magic dragon, things just happen like that. Nothing happens like that. Nothing. <laughs> Everything is in gradations. Everything is in stages. Once you get to the point where you realize, listen, I've got to work hard for this. I've got to have less sleep. I've got to change what I'm doing. Because whatever I'm doing right now is not producing the results that I need. So that means you need to make uh, large or minor minute changes to change your personality and attitude toward what you're doing. Because if you don't do that, then you'll either give up or you'll fall fall by the wayside. You're going to say something. I feel that. like a lot of us don't make those that first step, which is I feel like a self-assessment. Yeah. You have to look around, mm-hmm. observe what you're doing every day. Yeah. And, and that thing that you're doing every day is either helping you get to the goal that you feel like you want to be at, mm-hmm. or it's hurting, or it's, yeah. or it's taking you away from that goal. Correct. And you have to, you have to have, you have to do that self-assessment. And I, I got to go back. I got to go back even one. You got to have enough self-awareness and self-esteem to ask yourself. Mm-hmm. You got to be not. You can't be scared of your. You can't be scared to ask yourself those. Those questions. Those questions. Those questions. Because, and you, you're so funny you say that, because I was thinking about the same thing. I got offered a business idea, right, to add, to expand my business. Now, somebody was like, they, they're the person who even offered the idea and opened up the door for me to do something. And they're like, well, I don't think you have enough individuals for you to continue doing this. And I was like, I can't let that person stop me from, I was like, no, I'm just, I'll figure it out. I'll either market or I'll expand my, my, um, my base or I'll do more to try to get more people mm-hmm. into that business instead of like being concerned with all oh, these people are not, are not, I don't see the, uh, the, the fruit in the beginning. You know what I'm saying? I made a decision um, recently that, that really kind of helped my business. Like take everything you can get out of your business and put it back into your business until it grows to where it needs to be at. Mm-hmm. Sometimes people like don't realize your business is like, is like a living, breathing organism. You have to feed it. You take the money that you get and just put it in your pocket and you spend it and you don't you don't promote and market your business, your business is gonna die. That's how your business dies. And if you don't take that accountability, if you say, listen, you know, usually it takes about three three years for a business to, to um to break even or make any type of profitability. That's from mm-hmm. the start of the business, right? Three to five years, right? Mm-hmm. Anywhere between there. So that means that you you're not taking any salary. You're taking that money and just reinvesting back into the business. And a lot of people don't do that and they don't take an accountability for their business. They say like, okay, I'm getting money. I'll take it, I'm spending on this, I'm spending on that. Instead of just saying, listen, you know what? I'm not taking any of the money that I get on me. I'm gonna take it, put it back into feeding the business. And the business will eventually start growing because you're feeding it. You're, you're putting more money into your marketing. You're putting more money into your equipment or into your services. And then all you gotta do is just provide the best service. Uh, that's, 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 yeah, man. I feel like, it, f- to be transparent, mm-hmm. to be super transparent about this, like, I feel like that, that's my, that's one of my bigger, my bigger faults is knowing that I might just, I might get this business going mm-hmm. and start using the money to pay all my other bills to exactly. try and get stuff going. Cause that's, that's the, that's the thing. You're going crazy. Yeah. You, you made the business out of basically necessity. Yeah. And then you telling me after I start, yeah, I gotta put it back. Exactly. I can't. I can't fix my problem right now after exactly. I started the business. Exactly. And and a lot of people won't tell you. A lot of people won't tell you that that that's it's I, I, it's a I think it's an operation operating out of fear. Fear. It is. It is. When you're taking the money from an organism mm-hmm. that could grow yeah. and get you so much further later, yeah, exactly. you're operating out of this the fear mindset of taking taking that money out of there and throwing it into your own situation so that you can ease yourself. Exactly. For now. For now. For now. And to be honest with you, I, I realized that like I was like, you know what? I can't take that money and apply it to my biz, to my needs, my personal needs. Cause I'm like, oh, I have these needs. I gotta pay rent. I gotta pay car payments. I gotta pay all this other stuff. And then I'm gonna take that money and then I'm going to use it just to assage myself. But then guess what? Your business suffers because now your business 
it produces a certain amount of things, it'll go up and down, there'll be highs and lows. Really, when it comes down to business, you gotta discipline yourself to give the business what it needs. Mm. Like, I always realize that like I'm such a bleeding heart person that I, you know, I feel sorry for people and I'll try to help them out financially. And that's great, but you gotta create a different standard within yourself when you do a business. You have to say, okay, the business needs this money. Cause sometimes you're afraid that people are not gonna value what you do. So you, you try to cheapen yourself. Mm. And, and if, they, if they don't come, you're like, oh man, they didn't come cause I was charging them too much. But you know what the thing about it is that you've got to get to the point where you're like, no, listen, this is my rates, and no matter who comes, this is my rates. And then I will, I will continue. I'll eventually get to the point where people are paying my rates because I value my rates. And then mm. if they don't value it, I'll find somebody else who will. It almost goes down to the, the law of attraction. You're attracting what you... If, if you are willing to change mm. on the dime for yeah. a sad face... Yeah then that same sad face will come to you and not be able to pay you for the service that you provide. Exactly. And you got to understand that you that some people are just attracting that. Yeah. And they don't know that they are. They feel yeah. like, oh, I'm such a good person, but I'm not getting anywhere. Exactly. And, and a lot with of, the business. With the business. And a lot of it has to do with you. Because I, I had to check myself on that. Like, I remember I was talking to somebody who was telling me about uh, some fees that, you know, that, I was, that they were charging. And I was like, oh, wow, I, I didn't even think to charge these individuals these fees because I was like, oh, I want to try to help. But you know what? That doesn't really work when you're trying to do your business. So when you're suffering, you know, so a lot of times your business suffers because you don't have, you don't have extreme, you don't have cash flow mm. and you have a consistent cash flow. So if you have consistent cash flow, then, and you know, and you're making sure your accounting is proper, there's really no reason why your business is suffering. And a lot of times when people have business, it's usually, it's usually like right now, I kind of bootstrap mine, but now when I start getting to the point of business credit, I have enough money where I can use it as a buffer, but recognize that, listen, I'm, I can operate the business on a higher level, having a backup with credit, but at the same time, my standard has to stay the same. You know what I'm saying? I still gotta maintain where I'm always charging everybody equally, fairly across the board, where I'm not giving favors to this person, favors that person. Mm -hmm. and that's what causes a lot of problems. You know what I'm saying? Oh yeah, it, it can it can create a, a, a gaping hole in, in your in your bottom line. Correct. I had a mentor tell me one day, it's um, Eddie Pugh, mm -hmm. um, great great mentor, um, business person in the music business in the 70s and 80s, even even now. Eddie Pugh told me, it's not the big holes in the bag of sand that you're carrying. It's the tiny ones yeah. that you don't see every day. Yeah. Just tiny pinholes in your bag of sand, and you 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 end up with a whole bag of sand on the ground. You still holding the you still holding the bag. All the sand's on the floor. Yeah. Because of the tiny pinholes of yeah. of of doubt. Uh oh sh oh they're nice. Yeah. Oh I'm nice. Mm -hmm. Oh I oh I feel bad. Boom. Yeah. The tiny those aren't giant pinholes in your in your in your in your thing. Those are, those are little bitty ones and those little bitty ones add up so much that yeah. you end up you end up out of out of gas. Out of gas, you're in a bad <laughs> position. You end up like in a in a situation where you see like other companies go down, you're like, how are they profitable and they're going down? A lot of it has to do with mismanagement and more so has to do with cash flow. Because if you have cash flow in your business and it's always flowing, you're gonna be successful. Because that's the that's the name of the game. And if mm -hmm. you don't have a consistent cash flow, you're gonna be there's gonna be pockets where you're, you're gonna be highs and lows. And I realize you don't have to have those highs and lows. Those highs and lows depend on you because you're the standard. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You've got to recognize within yourself. Like, you can't say, okay, man, I don't want to accept this amount of money. No, you've got to get break out of that mindset. Mm -hmm. you got to be like, okay, I want $100,000 per year in this company. I've got to get myself to think, like, I've got to accept that. Like, it's almost like, I'll give you an example. I used to think about this analogy of pastors, right? Mm -hmm. Like, a pastor will have a whole flock of individuals. Right, but those individuals all have problems, right? Mm -hmm. So what happens is the pastor takes on all these people's problems, right? He doesn't pass those. He, if he if he takes on those problems, it's almost like with Moses, he had all these people coming to him. You know, his father-in-law said, "Hey, listen, 
you need to make sure to get somebody else to, to take care of the small stuff because mm-hmm. you're going to get overwhelmed. You're going to die because yeah. you got so much stuff going. So you got to recognize, oh, you know what? I've got to be more circumspect with what I'm doing. I can only have the capacity to take this amount of people. I feel like it's almost like with a pastor in, in a church, he has he, the church is only as big as his heart is. Mm. You know what I'm saying? And your business is only as big as your heart is. You know what I'm saying? So if you can't, if you don't have good customer service, you can't talk to people, you can't relate to individuals, you cut people off, you don't have a, a allowance for certain things, you, your business can only grow as much as you are. Your business is gonna grow out of your own heart. It's gonna grow out of your own leveling up yourself. Because once you start leveling yourself, it'll be like, okay, this is my standard. I'm not changing the standard for nobody else. And I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna go, I'm not gonna go into a situation uh, where I'm gonna put myself in deficit before I do something else. Like I had this mindset, like I always make sure, um, and it sounds like a selfish thing, but it's really not. Like mm-hmm. take care of my first mm-hmm. before I pay out somebody else. Don't don't cut your throat to despite your your you know mm-hmm. despite your face or whatever the case may be whatever that mm-hmm. that is. So basically, like if I'm gonna eat, I'm not gonna cut my throat first. I'm gonna make sure I eat first so I can give to somebody else. You know what I'm saying? And if I had to pay somebody, I'm waiting till somebody pays me first, then I'm gonna take care of that bill. Because if I'm in a deficit and I have nothing, I can't put gas in my car, then I'm then I'm screwed right then. You know what I'm saying? Period. You, know you can't do anything. You can't get to the business. You can't you can't get to the business to collect the money because exactly. you got the gas to get there. Exactly. And a lot of times we have an issue with, with businesses is that we have a problem collecting money from people. Mm. And, and, and see, the issue is if you make sure that your collection, your POS, your your purchasing operating system is is in good form, then you don't have to worry about that. But if you have if that portion of your business is not corrected, and you're always chasing after people to make you pay, and you got to run them down, that's exhausting, and that's what that's what steals away from your business. Then you got to pull from your own money to take care of stuff in the business instead of it just coming in flow. But you set that standard when you first start with your client. Right, 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 right. I just, yeah, I'm I'm not in the business space yet. I'm I'm, I'm a bu- yeah, I'm a business, business owner. Right we in business. Right we in now, business bro. right now. I'm a business owner, but I haven't I haven't got into into it that that deep. And it, it I was listening to uh was listening to uh Jim a guy named Jim Rohn today, mm-hmm. a great motivational speaker, mm-hmm. also recommended by um well, recommended by Eddie Pugh. Okay. Um, and Jim Rohn was talking about how our our self esteem basically plays into all of this. Wow. You know, it's yeah. it's us. Yeah. It's not the business. Mm-hmm. It's it's you. You gotta yeah. just you just gotta look yourself in the mirror mm-hmm. and say what it is. Yeah. Like you, it can't be the business because the business does what it already does. True. You run the business. Exactly. You came up with it. You. It's out of your brain. It's your baby. It's your thing. Mm-hmm. It's your it's it's your way of making things happen. Mm-hmm. And you have to be. At a certain level of self-esteem to do this, yeah, yeah, because people will bleed you dry. Yeah, they will. Yeah. They will. They will. They will come in with every story under the under the sun mm. and bleed everything out of your business, and then ask you for something on top of that. Exactly, and it's crazy you should say it because I was just talking with a client, and I'm not going to expose them or anything like that. But the fact that matters, I explained this person this individual how to save more money and end up getting more value and they were confused and they were like no I don't want to do it and I'm like what do you mean you don't want to get more value and pay less money like so it means I have to commun- learn to communicate that a little bit better because I was like I was like what are you talking about but you know what there's an underlying reason it's not the value and it's, it's something else and see, that's what we have to pinpoint with certain people. Some, it, 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 and I just based on that individual, I know it's not the money; mm-hmm. it's the the way in which I'm approaching them. About they know that I'm not gonna I'm not gonna chase them down. They have mm. to they have to adhere to my standard. 
that standard is going to be higher for them. Where they were paying with somebody else, they were kind of like, you know, you know, assage them and make them feel good and, and let them pay when they want to pay. They know this is not that. Yeah. So because this is not that, they recognize, oh, I'm going to have to pay this dude on time. Yeah, you're going to have to pay me on time because i got to pay somebody else. Like when you have another person that you got to pay, that is a different story from you getting just paid by an employer. When you're the employer and you're responsible for somebody having to pay their bills now, mm-hmm. you have, there is no tolerance for like somebody like, oh, I, I'll pay you next week, or I'll pay you, with, no, you gotta pay me on time, every time, each time, because if you don't pay me, I have to answer to that individual, and I'm not gonna, I'm not, I didn't hire that individual for that individual to look at me like, well, where's my money? You know what I'm saying? There that money's gotta be there, so I'm not gonna be begging you for your, for the money, for the service that I provide for you that you asked me to do. Mm-hmm. So I know I'm providing the service, so now you gotta make sure that, hey, no matter what, uh, Mr. Mr. or Mrs., Listen, the, it's, it's due on the first, just like your rent, just like anybody else, it's due. You gotta pay it, and it's nothing personal. I got nothing personal, but I have other people I'm responsible for. And you gotta recognize that. You gotta be able to see that. And, and, and it's almost to the point where you shouldn't even have to explain that to somebody. Yeah. That you have to pay other people, or yeah. the business has to continue going exactly. so that you can get the service that you're asking me to pay later on. Exactly. The business has to keep going. There's exactly. no way this, this it doesn't work like that. And a lot of people want it to work like that. Yeah. They want to be, you know, like you said, massage. They want to yeah. be told, oh, you got this extension and that extension, or we got this much time to do it. And it goes back to that, that law of attraction. When you started feeling that feeling like, this person might not take this from me yeah. like that. Correct. You are, that's it's already, it's yeah. already, sometimes you got to have red flags as a business owner. Yeah, you do. It just works like that. You yeah. got to have those red flags like, and it's not that you brush that person off, but that you know how to, how to navigate with that person. When that person is ready, mm-hmm. you tell them, hey, whenever you're ready yeah. to do this the way it should be done. It the way I don't know. People not people don't go as wrong with the should be. They gonna get mad at you and curse you out. There. <laughs> They're like, this is the way it should be done. Okay, I not even you, like I that. Tell you I done. tell you, it should be done like My this. Way the My way or the highway. You know what I'm saying? You let people. You let people off the hook. You know, yeah. slow. You know, not nicely. You let them off the hook. Well, whenever you ready to, uh, you know, get on this winning team, yeah, then we'll be here. Yeah. It'll, we'll be doors will be wide open for you. Yeah. Until then, I I I I see you. I still send you out some 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 uh, pamphlets. Make sure you're there for my our uh, charity drive. Yeah. Make sure you come and yeah. do. This. You gotta have other things to show them other than other than your your um basically your strict way of doing correct yeah. your business. You yeah. got other ways to exactly. move it over. Like exactly. hey, just come on by. Mm. Um, whenever you got some time, maybe maybe you can uh. Maybe you could uh, help out with a class or something. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I found some way to, to feel um, invited. Therefore, you got a lead later. Yeah. Yeah. And, and you know, the thing is, I'm telling this to you, audience. I'm telling telling this to you basically what goes on behind closed doors. Because, you Ooh. know, I do have to do a certain amount of due diligence to keep the client, too. I'm not going to yeah. tell the client that. But I'm telling you as a business owner, like a person or a future business owner, you're a person trying to get to that point like what you need to do. So, you know, hey, uh, guys, hopefully you take from what we just had this conversation, hopefully you get something out of it. Like it's really to get your mindset in the entrepreneurial spirit and some things you might have to deal with in the future with individuals and how to prepare yourself. I mean, you always want to make sure the client, the customer is always right. Customer is always right. But at the same time, you got to have a standard within yourself that you don't allow the client to bend you in ways that you're not supposed to be bent in order to, to, to go over to at the expense of your business where you won't be able to operate it properly. But like you said, there's ways of di- doing there's, different things. There's right? always ways of doing that, man. And last I, word, brother. Last words, man. Hey, first things first. Look, take an inventory yeah. of what's going on. Yeah. Second thing, start weighing those, start weighing the things that you see. Yeah. Are they, are they, um, are the things that you're doing every day helping you get to your goal or hindering you get to your goal? Don't be wishy-washy about it. It either is yeah. or it isn't. It ain't. 
There it is. That's the big word, right? Ain't. Ain't. That's what it we ain't, say. Baby. That's what we say down here, baby. It's ain't. It either is. It's ain't. Or it ain't. All right. It either is or it ain't. And third, once you weigh those options, let that stuff that wasn't working for you go. Let it go. Let so, it go. Let it go. Baby. You gotta. You gotta just put, put get that strength up and just let it go because you got goals to get out there. We got goals to get out there, and you can't let you can't let yourself get yeah. in the way. Yeah, don't let yourself. Don't let you. yourself get in the way. Yeah. Um, yeah. 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 That's how that goes. Yeah. Period. That's how you start. And and one more word. Just start. Yeah. Just start. Just start do the hardest it. Part. Start at the hardest part. Once you get started, you do it one time. Like yeah. You get it twice. Yeah. You get it three times. Now you're a mogul. Exactly. You know exactly. what I'm saying? You got things going. You got you to gotta get things going. And with that said, this is another <laughs> D&D <laughs> Leveling Up Podcast. Once Woo! again, it's your boy, King D Money. And Dirk Warren, T-O-D-W-T, baby, in the house. If you don't know, now, now you, you know. know. That's it, baby, boys and girls. We out. We out. Peace. Peace.